Hi, I'm George Levy and I'm here to vote. Oh, hey, I'm George Levy and I'm here to vote. Hi there, I'm George Levy and I'm here to vote. Wait, 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 wait. There can only be one George Levy and that's me. And in this video, we're going to talk about how blockchain is preventing voter fraud. Let's take a look. Hey, Blockchain Visionaries, I'm George Levy. Welcome to the One Blockchain Studios. Today, we're going to be talking about voter fraud. I hope you enjoyed the opening segment where I actually uh, got to play around a little bit with my green screen. But I wanted to actually make multiple versions of myself because that's exactly what people are doing with uh, voting. There's actually a very contested election going on in the United States of America. And right now, there's a huge battle where a lot of like threats and different uh, accusations are being done around the concept of male voter fraud. And uh, I want to talk about specifically about about some of the history that's been going on with uh, voter fraud. And then I'm going to talk about the fact that the U.S. Post Office is actually looking at applying blockchain to actually help preserve the integrity of the elections. I'm going to tell you exactly how that works because uh, it's not going to be ready by the 2020 elections. That's a real shame because right now this is the most contested election I've ever experienced in my entire life. And uh, there are many, many threats through being thrown around when it comes to the integrity of uh, mail voting. So let me talk to you a little bit about how blockchain ties into the equation and how it's the perfect solution to be able to preserve the integrity of one person casts one vote. So to do that, I want to talk to you about specifically what's been happening. Let me give you a little bit of history of uh, the fact double voting and even triple voting have happened in the past. Let me give you here an example. This is actually a report that was actually issued in 2016 about double voting and even triple voting found in U.S. elections. Some people actually cast two and three times their votes. They actually can go across different states. They can cast multiple times. Same person casting their vote multiple times. To actually address this, I want to talk about the fact of something known as double spend problem. The double spend problem is uh, the key thing that enabled Bitcoin to become a success as a digital cryptocurrency. Actually being able to be a digital currency that you could exchange to be able to send money over the internet. Because Bitcoin was not the first attempt at making electronic cash but it was the first successful attempt. And today, Bitcoin is a very, it's a global phenomenon and there are hundreds of billions of dollars worth of uh, Bitcoin that actually go around when you're doing volume. It's a massive, massive movement of uh, money. And uh, when we really think about the fact of what makes a Bitcoin valuable, I want to take you to the concept of how blockchain enables Bitcoin to be what's known as digitally scarce. This concept of having digitally scarce or actually digital scarcity is, uh, is what makes Bitcoin work. So let me put in context of what happens by talking to you a little bit about uh, double spend. In fact, first I want to talk about the fact that the U.S. Post Office filed a patent for a voting system combining mail and a blockchain. Now I'm going to talk to you about how a blockchain and uh, this concept of solving the double spend problem can actually help solve this issue. So let me take you through the concept of the double spend problem by talking about taking a digital picture. So let's assume you actually have a camera and you take a photo. So I'm going to take a digital photo of this bird, right? So right now what I've got is I've got a digital picture of a bird. And if I email that bird to someone else, you would think that I've actually sent that photo to someone else. I mean, at the end of the day, you received the photo of a bird. So I emailed you the photo. But that's not actually what happened. You now have two photos. You've got the original that you have in your computer and the one that you sent by mail. You see, you actually just doubled that image. And the fact is, digital assets have that problem. Same thing happened when you actually had the music industry when the internet came along and the fact that people stopped buying music. Why? Because when you can take a song that you could actually buy on a CD or a record or on a cassette, turn it into an MP3, and then you can make that MP3 available for free all over the internet, why would anybody want to buy a song? And that's what happened and crushed the music industry. When people were able to take a digital asset, in this case an MP3 of a song, and just duplicate it and send it unlimited across the world, you basically lost the value of that song. This is why you can't simply just take money, attach it to an email, and send it to someone else. You need to have a bank or PayPal or some sort of service, a credit card, to be able to do that transfer of money. That's why you have money transfer services. You've got Western Union. You've got PayPal. You need that third party 
to be able to create that transfer of money, but not with a Bitcoin. With a Bitcoin, you can do that transfer directly peer to peer. But here's where it gets really interesting. If I actually take a Bitcoin that I own and I send it to someone else, it's very important that I no longer have that Bitcoin. You see, that's what makes the Bitcoin valuable. If I give you my Bitcoin, I no longer have that Bitcoin. But if I take a photo, a digital photo, and I email you that photo, and I still have that photo, I didn't really give you anything. I just gave you a copy of something. So when we talk about the double spend problem, this is why blockchain is so important. Because a double spend problem basically would mean that if you were to take a picture of a $100 bill, you could just copy, paste it, and duplicate money and send it to someone else. That's why you can't duplicate, copy, and paste money and send it to other people. So put that in context if you apply it to a vote. So if I have a vote and I cast my vote, it's very important that I no longer have that vote. You see? So by actually tracking on blockchain, you can have a digital identity assigned to me and I am, I am given a token corresponding to my vote. And when I cast my vote, I no longer have that vote. You see, I can't vote again. Why? Because I no longer have the digital token representing that vote. And because my vote was cast and it's recorded on a blockchain, there's a permanent and immutable record of my vote as well as every other vote that took place because every vote in that election would be recorded on the blockchain in a permanent and immutable fashion. So this is why blockchain is such a perfect solution for being able to resolve this voting two times, voting three times, etc. So I hope you found this video valuable. There's a lot more where this came from. I publish brand new videos every single week. So I encourage you to hit subscribe and leave a comment below. Also, click like if you like this video and share if other people could actually benefit from them. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell so you know every time I publish a brand new video. I publish every single week and there's brand new content for you to learn. I hope you found this video valuable and that you learned something in the process. Again, I'm George Levy. I believe we're changing the world one blockchain at a time. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.